हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज योर एजुकेटर प्रियंका ठाकुर आई एम टीचिंग यू लाइसेंसेस एंड वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल गुरमंत्रा शिक्षा का ग्रंथ सो टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम पार्ट थ्री इन विच विल बी कवरिंग हार्ट पीज इलेक्ट्रोकार्डियोग्राम कार्डिक साइकिल्स एंड कार्डिक आउटपुट ओके सो स्टे ट्यून टिल द एंड एंड कीप वॉचिंग ऑल द वीडियोज एंड डेफिनेटली यू आर गोइंग टू हैव अ प्रैक्टिस सेशन ऑन द सर्कुलेटरी सिस्टम वॉन्स वी कम्प्लीटेड इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू कवर द कार्डिक डिजीजेस एंड द ब्लड वेसल्स which is the last part of the circulatory system after that you will have a practice session so do not forget to watch all the videos in the play playlist you can check out the playlist uh, uh, on our channel you will get all the videos there related to, uh, to circulatory system and there are many other videos which we are going to help you in your gate examination so without wasting even a single second now let's start with our today's topic which is about a heart beat and cardiac cycle cardiac output and heart sounds so what is heart beat heart beat is the regular movement of your heart as it pumps blood around your body okay so we know that uh, uh, our heart are uh, contracts and there is a rhythmic contraction of the heart so heart beat is the spontaneous rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the heart to pump out and receive blood to and from the body when our heart beats there it beats at an average of 72 times per minute and every beat lasts for 0.8 second see 72 by 60 you will get around 0.8 second so each beat lasts for 0.8 seconds right so whenever our heart beats first two atria contract then two ventricles contract and then all the chamber relax okay so uh, each cycle is of about 0.8 seconds so a human heartbeat is under the control of intrinsic factors and also there are some extrinsic controls of heartbeat so first of all we will talk about the intrinsic control of heartbeat as we know our heart is myogenic what is a myogenic heart that does not require any outside stimulation okay so there is a rhythmic contraction of atria and ventricle due to intrinsic conduction system of the heart sc node sc node initiate action potential in every 0.8 second and this these action potential cause the atrium to contract but uh, then impulses reaches av node when impulses are sent by sc node to av node there is a slight delay and that delay allows the atria to contract before the ventricles begin to contract okay that delay uh, in the uh, reaching of uh, action potential from sc node and a to av node allow the atrium to contract before the AV, uh, ventricles begin to contract and ultimately from av node these impulses travel through bundle of his and then to purkinje fiber which causes ventricles to contract okay so we know that during heartbeat our two atria and ventricles contracts not only these intrinsic components are responsible for the heartbeat but there is also neural control over the heartbeat okay and neural control center of our heartbeat regulation is medulla oblongata what is the center medulla oblongata remember sympathetic nerve increases the heartbeat and cardiac output what did i just tell you i tell you that sympathetic nerves increases the heartbeat they increases the strength of the component uh, of autonomic nervous system okay they what did they do they increases actually they increase the ventricular contraction more appropriately i would say sympathetic nerve increases the ventricular contraction and ventricular contraction results in increased cardiac output and not input it's cardiac output while parasympathetic thetic nerve decreases the heartbeat and they decrease the cardiac output it's not input it's output okay other than this medulla oblongata uh, there are some hormones which are responsible for the increased heart beat thyroxin which is released from the thyroid uh, gland it increases the heart beat by indirectly increasing the basal uh, metabolic rate basal metabolic rate are required high oxygen and that's why there is increase in the heart beat epinephrine and norepinephrine which are released from the adrenal gland also increases the heart beat and how do they do it the uh, norepinephrine they normally increases the heart beat but under normal condition norepinephrine is mainly responsible for the increased heart beat but when there is a, a situation of emergency during that situation epinephrine plays role in the increase of heart beat is it clear okay next we will come to know about electrocardiogram 
so we know that our body is a good conductor of electricity and what is electrocardiogram it is the recording of action potential which are produced by all the heart muscles during each heartbeat okay so all the action potential which are generated by our heart muscle fiber during each heartbeat they are recorded and their recording is called electrocardiogram okay so an electrocardiogram is a recording of action potential produced by all the heart muscles fiber during each heart beat okay the instrument which is used to record uh, uh, this action potential is electrocardiograph sometimes we got confused into electrocardiogram and electrocardiograph just because we consider electrocardiograph is the recording in which we will see the graph and electrocardiogram is the instrument but it's not like that electrocardiogram is that recording and electrocardiograph is the what it is the uh, instrument whenever uh, an electrocardiogram uh, is taken okay it is being taken electrodes are placed under skin and these electrodes are connected by wires to an instrument that instrument detect the heart electrical signals in each cardiac cycle we will see p qrs and t wave three waves are produced these waves represents the depolarization and repolarization of the heart the first wave p it represents the contraction of atrium qrs represents the contraction of ventricle it means when atrium contract they are depolarized when qrs uh, uh, that qrs is representing ventricle um, contraction it means at that time ventricles are depolarized t wave this wave represent the repolarization of ventricles okay so let's check it out p waves uh, it lasts for only 80 to 100 milliseconds and the contraction depolarization of p uh, of your atrium is caused due to sa node generated action potentials okay then those action potential are passed down to av node and then to wendel of his and purkinje fiber which then cause the depolarization of uh, ventricles and uh, you will see a ventricular contraction and qrs complex will be formed let's see this electrocardiogram and i will tell you each and every component of this p wave what i tell you what p wave is so showing it is a small upward deflection as you can see on the ecg okay it what it, is it representing it is representing atrial depolarization and this polarization is spread from the sa node throughout the atria okay it usually lasts for how many seconds 8 to 100 millisecond it is going to last second wave you can see is qrs complex what it is indicating it is indicating the onset of contraction of the ventricle okay it represent rapid ventricular depolarization as action potential spread into the ventricles and q this is a q wave q wave is the far, first negative a downward deflection after p wave you can see here and then r wave is it is a first upward or positive deflection uh, after q wave s wave is the deflection of a negative and downward deflection after r wave and this t wave what is it indicating it indicate ventricular repolarization and that occur just after the vent, uh, ventricular start to relax t is smaller than um, t is smaller but uh, wider than this qrs complex it uh, indicate that uh, depolarization uh, is uh, like a, uh, a slow process as compared to the depolarization you are seeing a pr interval this pr interval what is it including it is including a p wave and you can see a pr segment a p r segment so pr interval includes a p wave and pr segment pr segment what is it representing pr uh, represent the time taken by the av node to conduct the impulse okay pr segment represents the time taken by the av node to conduct the impulse from the sa node so what pr segment uh, indicate indicate the time taken by the av node to conduct the impulse and pr interval remember pr interval shortens at high uh, heart rates like uh, when you are exercising pr interval will be short and it will be increased it will be longer when uh, heart rates are lower for example when you are sleeping your heart uh, rate is comparatively slower so pr interval is then uh, shorter 
while it is longer uh, sorry it is uh, at the time longer while when you are exercising pr interval is comparatively shorter you will see a st segment okay st segment what is it representing it is representing the gap between the depolarization and then the repolarization qt interval look at this qt interval you can see uh, from, uh, it is measured from the beginning of qrs complex to the end of the 2t wave and it represents the time between the activation of electrical activity in the ventricle and their return to the relaxed state and resting state okay so ecg analysis what it can tell us it can tell us uh, about the abnormalities found in our body because the size of wave is the indicative of abnormality see if uh, p wave is larger it indicate that atrium are enlarged if q wave uh, q uh, wave is a uh, larger it in indicate myocardial infarction which may result in the heart attack if r wave is um, uh, like uh, enlarged more enlarged it indicates enlarged ventricle if t wave is more flatter than it is normal then it means muscles are receiving insufficient oxygen in the, as happened in the case of coronary artery disease so, so during coronary artery disease we will see there is insufficient oxygen received by the heart muscles okay so and a t wave uh, when uh, if t wave is flatter it is showing that uh, muscles are receiving uh, insufficient oxygen uh, as happen in coronary artery disease but when this t wave is elevated uh, it uh, shows there is high uh, potassium level in the blood and it is called hyperkalemia okay so during hyperkalemia t wave will be found elevated clear so i think it is clear to you now and uh, you are not having any problem in understanding this thing okay so let's talk about cardiac cycle now so what exactly is a cardiac cycle a cardiac cycle or what uh, a cycle of events which will occur in a uh, single heartbeat okay in a single heartbeat the all the events that are going to take place will constitute a cardiac cycle so you are reading the word diastole and systole systole means contraction diastole means relaxation okay each cardiac cycle is of 0.8 second in the beginning of uh, the cycle the both the uh, both the atrium and ventricles are in uh, joint diastole okay both are this is cardiac diastole all the chambers are relaxed and the blood flows into the heart okay so see we will first uh, start from the uh, uh, atrial systole what happened during atrial systole during atrial systole atria will contract and at the time uh, these uh, ventricles are in diastole it means they are relaxed atrial depolarization will cause the atrial systole as the atrial contract they will exert the pressure on the blood within them and th that will result in the opening of this atrioventricular valve av valves okay the tricuspid valves in the right atrium bicuspid valve or mitral valve in the left atrium and ventricles okay so then this valve will be open and the blood will start flowing from the atrium to the ventricles okay even before uh, the atrium uh, start uh, passing their blood from them to uh, ventricles ventricles already have uh, some volume of blood they already have 80 percent volume of the blood which is roughly equivalent to 105 milliliter and atrium uh, systole contributes to only 25 ml blood volume okay so uh, uh, after uh, this uh, atrium pour this uh, its blood which is around uh, 25 ml into the ventricles then atrial uh, systole ends the pressure uh, on at in atrium now decreases and now there will be what there will be uh, ventricular are still a bit relaxed okay ventricles are still relaxed at the end of atrial systole there is what there is the end of actually ventricular diastole at the end of atrial systole there is end end of ventricular uh, diastole so the each uh, each ventricle contain about 130 ml at the end of its relaxation period okay at its the end of its diastole it consists of 130 ml 80 105 it is having its own and 25 uh, ml is uh, given by the atrium so at the end of its diastole it consists of 130 ml of blood so it is called end diastolic volume okay now uh, they will uh, now atrium will relax 
and so atrial diastole will be there and ventricle will uh, start contracting when the ventricle start contracting then av node this av node atrioventricular node closes so that to prevent the backflow of the blood and uh, uh, for a few second for a few second for a few second what happens see the pressure in the ventricle arises it will close the av valves preventing the blood from returning to the ap but for about 0.5 seconds both semi lunar valves and uh, these atrioventricular valves are closed this is what we call isovolumetric contraction okay iso uh, what is the meaning of isovolumetric it means constant uh, volume and length okay so when the this uh, the pressure inside the uh, this uh, ventricles will arise these semi lunar valves will be open and then uh, there will be ejection of blood from the ventricle like from right ventricle the blood will move into the pulmonary trunk and from left ventricle blood will move into the aorta okay so uh, each ventricle is going to uh, pump out about 70 ml of blood and 60 ml of blood is left inside the ventricle and this 60 ml of blood is known as end systolic volume because it is the volume of the blood which is uh, uh, remained in the ventricles after their contraction okay now when they uh, like this uh, pump out the blood now ventricles uh, relax okay now there is a relaxation period during the relaxation period uh, that is going to last for about 0 0.4 second this uh, dicardic diastole okay the atria and ventricles both are what they are relaxed as the ventricle relax okay pressure within the chambers fall okay ventricle relax means the, there is too much pressure in the ventricles now and blood in the aorta and pulmonary trunk begin to flow backward backward but this backward flow is then prevented by semi lunar valves and after the semi lunar valve close there is a brief interval when ventricular blood volume does not change because all the four valves are closed this period is called isovolumetric relaxation okay when all the four uh, like uh, this one this one the, all the four are closed and at that time there is, there is a period of isovolumetric relaxation okay when ventricular pressure drops below uh, the atrial pre pre atrial pressure will be high uh, compared to ventricular pressure then uh, the av valves will open and ventricle will start filling again okay at the end of relaxation period ventricles are about three quarter full okay how much they are full three quarter full but after once once the ventricles pump out their blood they are in relaxed state and atrium is also in the relaxed state for 0 0.4 second and this is what we call cardiac diastole and after this diastole the uh, cardiac uh, atrium uh, will be uh, contracted they will pour their blood into the ventricles and then ventricles will be contracted and they will pour their blood they will pump their blood into the aorta and pulmonary artery and this cycle will continue which is of about 0 0.8 seconds there are two heart uh, there are not two but four heart sound that's a, that are produced in each cardiac cycles okay but normally we can hear only two two are loud enough to be heard through the stethoscope first sound is love which is of low pitch and uh, uh, relatively longer while second uh, sound is dub which is of higher pitch and it is shorter love uh, a sound can be heard when av valves are closed and av valve will be closed when uh, ventricles contract at their systole <laughs> isn't it because ventricular contraction will result in the backflow of the blood so atrioventricular valve will be closed so first sound will be produced when ventricles start contracting and AV, they will start uh, uh, the blood will start uh, to backflow into the atrium at that time AV valve will be closed and LUP sound will be produced while DUP sound uh, is produced when semi lunar valve closed to prevent the backflow from the pulmonary trunk and aorta into the left and right ventricles okay but when these valves open there is no sound no sound is produced when these uh, valves are open right uh, remember this thing uh, no sound is produced when these valves are open so there are though two major sound lup and dub which can be heard and generally four but only two can be heard lup is associated with av valves and dub is associated with semi lunar valve first sound is lup you will see lup dub lup 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 dub lup dub lup dub okay first sound is love second sound is dub okay now let's talk about cardiac output what is cardiac output is the volume of blood that will be pumped by each ventricle in a minute 
how much volume of blood will be pumped by each ventricle in a minute is called cardiac output we know that our heart perform 72 cycle and each cycle lasts for 0.8 second okay so during each uh, cardiac cycle heart pumps out 70 ml of blood which is called cardiac stroke how much 70 ml of blood in each cardiac cycle while what is cardiac output per minute per minute 72 times heart will beat in each time 70 ml of blood will be pumped out so cardiac output can be obtained when the stroke volume this is uh, 70 ml uh, that is uh, what is stroke volume or cardiac stroke uh, like volume of blood pumped um, uh, pumped by each ventricle okay so cardiac output is obtained when stroke volume is multiplied by the number of heart rate so we can define cardiac output as the amount of blood flowing from the heart or we can say from the left ventricle into the aorta in a minute roughly you will get 70 ml into 72 because this is the 72 is the heart rate okay and uh, 70 ml is the stroke volume roughly you will get i think uh, 5040 so we will say 5000 milliliter or 5 liter is the cardiac output of a heart healthy individual this cardiac output this uh, cardiac output can be you know, what it can be changed we our body has the ability to change this cardiac output uh, as you have seen in athlete uh, the cardiac uh, heart rate can be increased and hence stroke volume will be changed and ultimately because heart rate is uh, changing it is increasing stroke volume is increasing so there will be a uh, change in the cardiac output as well so that's all for today in the next lecture we will discuss about blood vessels and after that you will have a practice session on uh, this circulatory system but if you want to prepare for CSIR net GRFC 2021 you can take the subscription of an academy and uh, here is the detail of paid classes on your screen you can use the uh, code Neha to get the 10% off and go there follow Neha Taneja ma'am and uh, uh, enjoy the great session by her but uh, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon and go wherever you want I mean Join us wherever you want by a single click. Check out the description box. You will get the link and you will be there with us on our different platforms. Till then, take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.